Let's start discussing some of the muscles. Now we're going to start with the more thoracic muscles and we'll break it down into other segments um, so you can study them independently. When we take a look at the cat, a lot of students struggle with this at the beginning because the muscles lie close on top of one another. What we're going to do here is we're going to focus on just the thoracic region, just these muscles. We'll address the other ones later, like I said. Uh, the first on our list is cutaneous maximus. Now, cutaneous maximus actually is a top overlying uh, set of muscles that connects the muscles to the skin. There's actually a set of muscles there. If you think of cats and other animals with fur, they're able to manipulate that, uh, that skin or that, uh, the, the pelt independently, and cutaneous maximus is the muscle for that. Another muscle that's on our list is the platysma. Now the platysma is a thin sheet that just brings the, ch uh, the chin or bottom jaw of the mandible down toward the chest, um, brings it down and in. And that muscle has a lot of times been kind of torn away. You can see some remnants of it right here, but because of the injections and everything else, how they had to prepare these cats, a lot of times that's torn away. Um, we're going to also skip the sternomastoid and the clidomastoid. I just want to point out on the human, that is one muscle called the sternocleidomastoid. In the cat, it's actually separated into two, here and here, into a, a separate sternomastoid and clidomastoid. I just want to um, point that out because these are going to be prepared in different ways, it's going to be difficult to see on some cats, so I'm just going to skip it. <clears throat> now when we move down to the thoracic cavity, um, it's really difficult to see um, at the beginning some of these different uh, muscle groupings. And what I've done is I'll, I'll go through and show you how to actually flesh those out a little bit, and then I'll show you on the other side of the cat what is actually going on. We actually see several different muscle layers. You can see one grouping here, and one of the challenges is to find where those groupings are. Here's a suggestion. The suggestion is to stretch the arm out, and you can see uh, some different striations with that. I'm going to try to zoom in here so we can see some of those striations. And that actually shows up quite nicely when we do it this way. See, as I stretch this out, you can start to see different groupings popping out. And what I do is I take a very flat angle on my scalpel. I go a very flat angle, I find where those striations are, and I just follow it with the point of my scalpel here. And you can see how that just pops right out. As soon as I cut that fascia away, you can see that muscle grouping right there just pops right out. Now here's another one up here. What you really have to do is you have to clean off a lot of fascia and then stretch the muscle and remember to keep your scalpel blade very flat. Here's another one up top here. I'll change my scalpel blade and cut this way. So I'm not cutting any muscles, and that's the misconception a lot of students will have. I'm not cutting any of the muscles at all. In fact, what I'm doing is I'm just simply removing some of the fascia that ties the muscles together and separating those out. There's one there, and lastly, one here. Now you want to be really careful not to cut any of those muscles. Again, I'm just separating. You can see I can actually work the blade of my scalpel and I'll move to a different tool so you can see that this muscle actually lifts up and it forms one continual sheet. Now what this is, if I can zoom out again, what I'll find is that the muscles are set up in packets of four. Okay, and I'll move over to this side. I've pre-dissected some so you can see those layers a little bit better. I can just lift that up so you can see a little bit of definition there. There's one up here and one down here. Now the first of these muscles, if you think of the bones underneath, this will really help. Now if you take a look, what we're seeing is the xiphoid process of the sternum itself. So the, the xiphoid process is down here, it's the same on the human, and what we'll find is the xiphi humoralis is the first of these pectoral muscles. What it does is it runs from the xiphoid process and it actually follows up underneath the armpit and runs to the humerus itself. So xiphi 
humoralis. The next muscle right here, from here to here, is actually misnamed, and it's named because of the human, not of the cat, because this muscle, even though it's quite large, is called, right here, from here to here, is going to be called the pectoralis minor. Now on the cat, the pectoralis major is actually quite a bit smaller. It's triangular shaped from here, from here to here. And basically, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. There we go. You can see the nice triangle shape from here to here. This is the pectoralis major. Notice that it is much smaller than the pectoralis minor right here. Pectoralis minor, pectoralis major, and the last one is the one, the one that runs from the sternum itself all the way to the head of the humerus, actually a little bit further down to the middle line of the humerus, and this is called the pecto ante brachialis. Now this word, if you break it down, pecto refers to pecto, the pectoral region. Ante actually means before, and what this muscle runs before is the brachialis muscle. So pecto ante brachialis is simply descriptive, more than one long term that you need to uh, define and memorize. Now this top muscle, and I'll point this out later, this top muscle up here is going to be the deltoid. Okay, the deltoid is just like us, it sits right on top of the muscle. So to review, what we're going to find, if I can or situate this cat, right? Here's what we're going to see, is the xiphi humoralis, the pectoralis minor, the pectoralis major, the xiphi humoralis, and the deltoid right up here on the shoulder. That's one big muscle that's going to run basically over the entire thing.